Hey, so welcome back. Uh, I got some seeds in the mail today, so I was going to be looking through some of them so that I can try them with you and we can take a look. Okay, so one of the things that we want to do at World Leaf Nursery next year is to be able to have more herbs to offer um, for sale online and just because, I mean, I think that um, supporting our health is something that we're really into here and nice organic herbs, I guess, are, which I didn't realize, sometimes hard to find and so I was going to try my hand at growing some. So I ordered some seeds and here's one. This is German chamomile. So pretty common. Most people are familiar with chamomile. So we'll be, we'll be trying that one. This is a new one. Uh, I've never grown it before. Ashwagandha. Uh, and if you're familiar with um, uh, Ayurveda, medicine. This is a really common one that they use, like uh, women problems, depression, uh, it's like their, their cure-all herb. I, don't, I can't make any claims or whatever, but I don't know. I've never grown it. You you harvest the roots, so it would grow as like an annual all year uh, in whatever plot or wherever I decide to plant them, and then at the very end I'd harvest and dry the roots, and that's what, that's what you take. And I even take it uh, now. I buy it and uh, so that's why I wanted to grow it, so to help with depression and, and things like that. So oh, I know I'm all flowery all the time, but it's it's not it's not really like that. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's hard, and we need that little you know little herbs. And if you can get it from you know something natural, like you know why not, right? It's not. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here we have Salvia Appiana, which is the white sage. Um, this is the, traditionally the one that the smudge sticks that they use, the Indians used to make like those um, incense. Uh, so why not try that, right? That would be kind of fun. What they don't like is like wet feet, and so I don't know how well this plant is going to do here, but we'll see. And then I got another ashwagandha and it's from an African variety. So I got two, like one from the India and the one from Africa. Uh, same genus and species. I'm not sure what the what the difference is. So I don't know. Maybe one will grow better than the other one though. So we'll, that's that's kind of like what I'm testing. And uh, calendula, orange colored calendula. So you, I guess the whole plants basically you can use, but be harvesting the flowers, the petals. And then, you know, you make tea, you can put them on those soaps. I don't know, you do all kinds of stuff, but uh, that was one that, that was requested. And I, I was like, oh, I thought I had it, but it wasn't really calendula. It was, anyways, so let's see, it was marigolds. Comfrey, and I also ordered some crowns. So here's another kind of like cure-all herb that uh, I guess does really well here. Some people, some local people grow it, and they say that it that it does well. So there's that. Let's see. <laughs> this more organized, maybe. Uh, <laughs> go me. <laughs> more comfrey, and then the last one. Ugh. Lufas. Because, right, who doesn't like some natural loofahs? And these are, they grow as a vine. I don't know if you're familiar. Uh, and then I get this little casing, and then you harvest at the end of the season. But, yeah, uh, some all-natural loofah right here. How exciting. <laughs> so, I just wanted to pick a few that we could try. And that might help, you know, if we had some dried herbs or... I haven't put it all together in my mind completely yet, and since it's winter time, I just use getting the seeds ready and kind of know what I'm going to aim for next year and not sure how it would be marketed or all that, but maybe even just to experiment, you know? So, but those are the new herbs that we're going to be trying, and also, obviously, we're going to be keep growing native plants, and uh, I have penstemon seeds that I need to start, so maybe we will do that. Here we are at the seed library. <laughs> so let's see. Each. And. Pins 
Testament ambiguous. Ambiguous. Bonip, Hassephora. Perii Pentamen. Another variety. Penstemon Dazzy Phyllis. And Penstemon. Okay, so I thought we'd hang out here with Pimo really fast. So a few thoughts on Penstemons. Penstemons come from the New World. And there's thoughts that they kind of like all started in Utah. That's where the most species occur and kind of like bleed outwards a little bit into the western states. So they come from, there's a lot of different species and they come from a, quite a wide range of habitats and have tried growing many of them and a lot of them are extremely temperamental. <laughs> so we will see. But um, I think most of the ones that I have seeds that we just pulled out seeds for um, should do all right here. <laughs> so especially here in Aravaca, it's a little bit cooler um than than tucson is so i don't know we'll give it a shot but i will uh oh look at willow are you are you skeptical willow you pretty girl this is a nice spot because the sun shines in in the morning and, and the, the kitties come in and they get their sunshine uh but I, i'll go ahead and show you my method of planting pensamin seeds which are also temperamental and whether or not they even want to grow so but this is kind of like the time october uh, at least here and you know they could pop up anywhere from really soon to all the way you know through spring um i usually give up uh, once it starts getting hot though like summertime and i just do them in seed pots uh and, I, and then divide them when they grow and uh, divide them later well when it gets a little bit warmer when it's more towards springtime so let's go plant penstemon seeds <laughs> We say we need Here we are in the greenhouse again, and we have our penstemon seeds, so, and our little plant tags, so all that's left is I need to make little, um, seed pots and plant the seeds, but let's look over here, so, uh, that's what I call a seed pot, <laughs> this is a pot with some dirt, and there is multiple seeds in each of those pots, and, and if I know it's a plant that, like, will take division easily, and doesn't mind its roots disturbed so much then you know I'll, I'll and then they'll be like this and then you take that out and divide it um, and get many plants however some plants don't like their roots disturbed and if that's the case then I try to do them in their own individual pot but penstemons do okay for the most part and so I will be doing them in a seed pot and since their germination is so spotty it's like, I don't want to waste a whole bunch of pots when, you know, maybe they won't even grow at all. And here's our aloes from the last video, doing well. Penstemons have been planted, but for, I thought this would be interesting, right? So, this is Penstemon ambiguous, ambiguous, okay, and there's its seeds. Penstemon perii, see how similar they are? Penstemon etonia. I'm pretty sure this is etonia. It said red flower and there's a lot of seeds. So I'm thinking Penstemon dazzyphilus. Okay, and then that capsule, almost all penstemons come in little capsules like so all the seeds were inside of that. And then they've all been planted and you can see how quickly they just disappear. I sprinkled them right on top and I'll go back with a tiny bit of sand and cover them up. But you can see they're, you know, they're so little, you don't want to go crazy. I think a good rule of thumb with seeds is you don't want to bury them deeper than the size of the seed. So you can see that's pretty tiny. So I just to be like a like a salt shaker over top and and then the watering would really do the rest of the the covering of the seed. And then they'll hang out and fingers crossed that they all grow. <laughs> but um, you know, if they do, I'll let you know. 
Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.